This footage was widely distributed by Gulf War Veterans Association President Joyce Riley, a nurse and captain in the reserves at that time, who published it for the world to see to help stop the killing. Captain Riley, who was never biologically or chemically exposed to fallout during the Gulf War, is certain she was infected when forced to take the anthrax vaccination. The anthrax vaccine given to all of our troops and allies, except for French soldiers, was poisonously prepared and deadly to receive. Let's listen again to Dr. Kano to what she has to say about this vaccination business. As a precautionary measure during the war, about 150,000 U.S. service members were vaccinated against anthrax. And more would have been immunized if the war hadn't ended so quickly. These numbers are plainly wrong. There were hundreds of thousands more Americans victimized by the vaccines. Numerous experts have now linked the anthrax vaccine to hundreds of thousands of deaths and a currently advancing plague that emerged exclusively from the Gulf War called Gulf War Syndrome. The Senate thoroughly investigated this subject in 1994 and published proof that our troops were unwittingly used experimentally or alternatively targeted for disease and death by the vaccine makers with official political consent. Spreading across America and the world now is a flu-like illness that resists standard medical treatments. You probably know people suffering with severe recurring respiratory ailments. Experts have linked to an agent called mycoplasma. In fact, chronic fatigue, low body temperature, and a flu that keeps coming back is associated with this germ isolated and patented by the United States Armed Forces Institute of Pathology in a patent shown here. This agent, mycoplasma, apparently contaminated the anthrax vaccine given to more than a half million American troops that served in the first Gulf War. Dr. Kano from the Centers for Disease Control applauds this invention. This next government document was obtained by lawyers for the victims I just described. Here you can see the array of biological weapons being tested on the prisoners in Texas as overseen by Baylor College of Medicine. Baylor at that time boasted having George H.W. Bush serving on their board of directors. The dates listed here also coincide with the alleged transition of America's offensive biowarfare program to defensive. Notice the mycoplasma. Both defensive and offensive studies were conducted. A vaccine study and a hall study in which prisoners were actually exposed to this airborne agent in a meeting hall. According to congressional testimony by one of the nation's leading experts in mycoplasma and Gulf War syndrome as it relates to mycoplasma contaminated vaccines, Dr. Garth Nicholson, these Texas studies linked to Baylor College of Medicine as well as the privately owned biotech company called Tanox Biosystems of Houston, a company incredibly co-owned by James Baker III the man charged with overseeing the president's Florida vote recount that secured his heavily contested election. Here is a copy of Dr. Nicholson's letter to an investigating official. It reads, quote, Michael Plasma fermentans incognita strain, an unusual organism that had been found previously in some AIDS patients by Dr. Shai Ching Lo of the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology in Washington, D.C. We did not realize at the time that Dr. Lowe had previously been employed at Baylor College of Medicine and Tanox Biosystems in Houston, a privately held biotechnology company that had been named in Desert Storm Veterans lawsuits filed by Collard and Pitts, among others, as one of the companies that illegally sold biological weapons to Iraq. Dr. Nicholson, previously the chairman of cancer research and full professor at the University of Texas in Houston, went on to report how he was persecuted and academically blacklisted following his attempts to serve the public's health. Contrast this nightmare Dr. Nicholson lived through with Dr. Kano's matter-of-factly and incorrectly claiming the vaccinations given to troops were immunizations. In fact, for the sake of accuracy, evading for the moment the use of vaccinations to make people sick, the use of the two terms, vaccinations and immunizations, 
have been successfully confused by the government and industry propagandists. Immunizations and vaccinations are not the same. Vaccinations typically cause hypersensitization reactions including allergies, asthma, autoimmune diseases, and with contaminants such as mycoplasma or frequently inoculated herpes type viruses such as the Epstein-Barr virus, cancers can be triggered. Immunizations, on the other hand, are caused by natural exposures to foreign proteins that challenge our immune systems. The confusion persists simply because health officials and professionals acting as propagandists like Dr. Kano want people to believe that vaccinations prompt natural immunity, which they do not. With all vaccinations, whatever desirable sensitivity occurs against germs comes with great risks of side effects. Just read their package inserts, or a physician's desk reference, or Google search them to learn more about this sad truth. Now let's examine the source of the anthrax that Dr. Kano says woke us up to just how dangerous anthrax can be. According to experts investigating the anthrax mailings, this frightening attack and serial homicide was done with the help of America's own anthrax specialists, exclusively the two people Dr. Kano has introduced you to, Dr. William Patrick III and his CIA sidekick, Dr. Lebakov. How would I know this? I was the first science analyst to offer the FBI help in the case of the mysterious anthrax mailings. I began alerting officials two weeks prior to the media's first reported mailing. I was alerted by years of anthrax research and two segments of the ABC News with Peter Jennings, the nights of September 26 and 27, 2001. Jennings ended his Wednesday night broadcast saying, quote, Tomorrow, we're going to cover anthrax. We're going through your fears, one by one, day by day. Good night. Thinking this peculiar, and having done extensive research on the anthrax vaccine, I tuned into Thursday night's program, which turned out to be a virtual infomercial for Cipro. The bear company, as I mentioned, was on the verge of bankruptcy, they said, prior to the broadcast. Their Cipro sold for more than $700 for a 60-day supply. Peculiarly, the FDA had made this poorly tested, highly toxic antibiotic, the only endorsed method of treating anthrax. That was bizarre, because most doctors realized you could treat anthrax far less expensively with many other antibiotics.